Hey everyone, welcome to day 72 on the CDT. Uh, <clears throat> I got to hike into Rocky Mountain National Park, including um, the closed area for uh, the fire that occurred in 2020. Um, I hiked out of Grand Lake this morning at uh, 545. Um, in order to beat weather because I had to go over flat top mountain in the park Which is about 13 miles ish from town and I was able to summit that without um, Any rain There was rain in the far distance, but it wasn't really a concern at all. So I don't count that for uh, The number of consecutive days that rains either been in the area or, or rained on me. So as of right now everything is dry um once i got to flat top we we meaning the cdt to hikers we do a little bit more of an ascent and then we drop down um to start exiting the park um i'm actually camping in the park tonight uh the campground no the campsite that i'm at uh is called granite falls there's actually, um, I think there's two campsites. One is Granite Falls and one's Lower Granite Falls. And then there's two campsites at Granite Falls itself. And so I'm in one of those. And <clears throat> it definitely is in the burn area. Um, I got here at 2.45, so I was able to hike about 19-ish miles um, in about nine hour, nine-ish hours. So it was a pretty good pace considering um the like the ascent because coming from grand lake which i think is like 8900 or 9000 feet um we go up to i think above 12.3 i think is where we ended up maybe a little bit more or less i don't know but it's more than 3000 foot from the um from the town so <clears throat> I made pretty good time um, once I got to the top uh, it was just I think like five more miles six more miles to the campsite so I got here early um, I had a bit of a dilemma because I believe that in like two and a half miles is the cutoff I have to take to get out of the park and I think that cutoff is like another two and a half miles on top of the two and a half miles to get there so like five to six miles and since it's 245 and the weather's nice i thought about just hiking through the park um, and keep on going on the cdt the reason why i didn't is um i packed four and a half days of food specifically because i knew it was going to be in the park um so i'd rather Sorry, there's there's bugs around here. Um, I'd rather just go ahead and <coughs> get this afternoon's snacks out of my pack and tonight's dinner out of my pack. And that way tomorrow when I hike out, um, my pack will be a bit lighter on food. It'll have a, a full day and a breakfast um, out of it. And um, the reason why I want that is because there's there's a pretty big ascent tomorrow once we exit the park. I want to say we exit the park somewhere between nine to 9,500 feet, and then we got to hike back up above 12,000 feet, so another 3,000 foot uh, climb. So I'd rather just get that food out of my pack. Um, 19 miles is all right. I think that the terrain's going to start getting a little bit uh, easier, like after tomorrow's big hike, or two, uh, I think there's two climbs tomorrow that are pretty significant. And then after that, I think the, the climbs start getting closer to like the climb we did into Grand Lake, which was at a lower elevation and only a, a few hundred feet. Um, which means we, I'm, I may be able to get some big miles going to, <coughs> to Steamboat. Um, the burn area was sad. Uh, this campsite is actually in the burn area, and I'll show you folks some... I'll move the camera around so you can actually see this area, but um, the reason why I say that the burn area felt sad is 
Um, you can tell it was a hot fire. Um, not only did it burn roots in the ground, um, like right in front of me, I can see burnt roots that are in the ground, um, but it burned the top of the trees. So it looks like it was a canopy fire, which is um, usually has to be a pretty hot fire to destroy the canopies of the trees. Um, there's some horses going by with some equipment. I think trail maintenance folks are out. So that's nice. They waved. Um, canopy fires, they burn really hot and, um, they burn the tops of the trees off even the even the tall trees and those types of hot fires I think I'm, I'm <coughs> mentioned them in a video down in New Mexico when we walk through a burn but those canopy fires um, when they're burning like a blast furnace um, they destroy everything and it makes it difficult for the trees to grow back um, because the canopy fire burns so so hot that it's likely to burn the seeds, like in the pine cones and, and whatnot. Um, it's a big area that got burned. We ac we actually walked. Um, the, the The trail is closed, um, but CDT hikers are allowed to come through um, as long as we get a wilderness permit and <coughs> we're carrying <coughs> a bear canister. So. There were two burn areas that we walked through. Both of them looked like they were canopy fires um, because the tops of the trees were burned. And there's a lot of there's a lot of lumber on the ground. Um, you can also tell that it was a hot fire because when a burned tree falls across the trail, then the trail maintenance crew will come and they'll cut that tree and get it off the trail. And when I like I looked at some of the logs, you can tell if a log has been fallen before the fire because like the end of it would be black, just like every other piece of wood that got caught in the fire. But if it is a new cut, meaning after the fire, then if the fire wasn't too hot, you should see a regular, uh, you know, color of wood um, in the center of the tree that had fallen across the trail. Um, however, if the fire was hot, like a canopy fire, um, then when you cut the, the tree, the inside may be gray or not as, not as a bright wood color, um, meaning that there was damage inside the tree <coughs> from fire or smoke. It just felt sad. It, um, I'm not sure what started this fire. It could have been lightning and it could have been natural, but it was definitely a hot fire. So I'll, I'll pan around here because there's absolutely no shade at this camp campsite. Um, so you're gonna be able to see here as I kind of pan around, um, everything's burned. And I'll go slow, so hopefully this works and you folks aren't throwing up. Sorry for that jerk at the end. I just found out that the flies here are biting flies. So that was not, that didn't feel good. Um, so as you can see in 360 degrees, uh, everything got burned. Um, I did hike through a couple of sections that did not get touched by the fire. So the forest looks pretty healthy. Um, I was expecting to see a lot of beetle kill, but I, I didn't um, I didn't see a lot of beetle kills so it looks like this forest was a healthy forest before the fire came through or for the most part it was um, I when I panned around you couldn't see it but there's a ridge that's up around this other side here and um, the trees all the way to the top um, sorry there's one fly that's flying around me and won't leave me alone and it's the biting fly and I missed him so apparently the biting fly doesn't care two shakes about YouTube videos. Um, so any hoozy, the you can see the trees all the way up 
um, to the edge of the the ridge are are dead. Um, like there's the only green that's around here, and it's not trees. It's actually like flowers and grass. Um, I can show you because this fire happened a couple of years ago. There is a, a meadow down. Let's see if I can get it. Uh, maybe you can see the green uh, down in the meadow. Hopefully that worked. If not, I'm sorry, but there is a, a pretty sizable meadow that has um, green grass that is growing throughout. Um, and then in this campsite, there's a few patches of grass and a few flowers. Um, I don't see any saplings from trees. And if the fire was two years ago, you'd think you would start seeing small saplings from the trees. So that's another indication that it was a pretty hot fire. Um, since we did get to go up to 12,000, we meaning the CDT uh, hikers that do come through Rocker Mountain, a lot of people have heard rumors that it's closed and a lot of hikers are skipping this. So I don't know really how many CDT hikers have come through the official um, CDT in Rocky Mountain. I know of three other people um, that got permits to do so. I know of like Bex, she was expecting to do a slack pack, so just hike all the way through in one day. So some other hikers may have done that. Um, but those are the, essentially the four hikers that I know of that have come through. Um, but the CDT does go up to 12.5, so, or 12.3 or something like that, um, <coughs> on Flat Top <coughs> Mountain. And we also go up a little bit higher afterwards on a ridge. And the views are beautiful. Um, you know, they're alpine views, so you're looking at mountains with snow still on them and, um, you know, jagged ridges and, and, uh, and cliff faces and all that kind of stuff. So the views were, were beautiful. Um, the forest that's still green and healthy um, was absolutely beautiful and I'm glad I decided to come into the park because again I hadn't seen this um, very much of this side of the park at all like the Grand Lake Granby um, like west side of Rocky Mountain I haven't I can't actually think of a time that I've hiked into this side of the of Rocky Mountain I think I've always come in from the uh, east or Estes Park side um, so it was, um, it's a different side of the park. It, I'm glad I did it. Um, I hope that the forest is healthy enough to grow back and this doesn't become a, um, a, a bear area that just, you know, lower vegetation, meaning like shrubs or uh, flowers or grass grows in. Hopefully uh, they start getting some trees back. Um, I have I didn't ask any of the park rangers like in the wilderness office if there's a plan if the trees don't grow back naturally if they're going to do some some planting to bring them back so I don't know that answer. Uh, I think that's about it. Um, we had blue skies. I mean there were definitely storm clouds moving in in a couple of directions. Um, but they were not in my direction. Um, so, so far, uh, knocking on wood, I have not been rained on today. And um, the one storm I did see was, I, like I mentioned earlier, was in the distance and I really don't count that because it wasn't, it wasn't close enough to make me have to run or, or dodge or uh, get my, my raincoat out and that kind of stuff. Um, it was funny when I got here to eat lunch because I just decided to, to wait since I was making such good time I decided to wait to eat lunch and um, when I got here and saw that the park service hadn't put a shade structure up I don't know if they're going to or not um, my guess is they might since this campsite's not gonna have shade for years um, even if they pre-populate trees um, and I saw some lumber down on the trail so I'm wondering if they're gonna create some shade structures just because of uh, the lack of and um, people just getting baked in the sun but uh, when I got here the guy who's been rained on for 19 straight days essentially um, I was here for five minutes and I was pulling out my lunch and like part of that is a Snickers bar which <laughs> in this heat <coughs> and this heat's gonna meld in like seconds 
And so I was like, oh man, it'd be really nice if one of those puffy clouds got in front of the sun for about five minutes and gave me some shade. And then I stopped myself and I was like, the guy who's been rained on for so many days in a row just asked for a cloud to come in uh, in front of the sun. So that was that was a moment of, you know, <laughs> you want it all ways. So um, today's shout out goes to um, trail maintenance crews. Um, I just, it's Friday the 8th and I just saw the trail maintenance crew, um, before the horses, they were, I think they were like a half, half an hour before the horses, the trail maintenance crew was walking back to their camp. Um, and then the horses came through. So I, if they're using like conservation core or I'm trying to remember the name of all the different trail maintenance crews, like the college aged kids that do trail maintenance um it might like it might be surf core i don't remember that i i knew the names of them when i was supporting the park service and now uh 72 days i'm not sitting in front of a computer i'm already forgetting stuff um americorps maybe that was it so those maintenance crews if i remember their schedules correctly um I think they cut off early on Friday, go back to their camp and kind of settle things for the the weekend, and then they I think hike into into town. So they get a couple days off and get to go into town and um, have proper showers and if they want to do laundry and get town food that kind of stuff. Um, but once and they got to come back on Sunday because they they work a full week, um, like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I, th I believe they work longer days so they can cut off a little bit early on Friday and get out. Um, I'm just going off memory and also I've worked on a couple of maintenance crews for like the Colorado Trail Foundation and um, the Colorado 14ers initiative and uh, I've talked to those folks of how they run their, their week-long maintenance crews and that's, that's generally what they do is they'll cut off on Friday and let the let the volunteers um hey cloud they'll let the volunteers um go into town uh on a decent time on friday and then they got to come back sunday evening or late sunday afternoon i believe um but a huge shout out to those folks because hiking down this burn section this really big burn section after getting into the flat top mountain i was expecting a lot of blowdowns and a lot of um like disrupted trail that would have to be rebuilt and bridges that would have to be rebuilt and um just the grade of the trail having to be restructured and from like those five to six miles coming down from the flat top mountain to this campsite i think i had to step over like three trees which have probably fallen since they've done their trail maintenance so at the very end they'll go back and just do a final sweep before they leave um they had already rebuilt a bridge right down here. They've already rebuilt signs, um, like the Granite uh, Falls campsite sign is brand new. Um, the tread was easy to walk on. It it wasn't washed out. It wasn't um, it you know it did it wasn't ruined in any way. It was a pretty easy trail to walk on. So those folks have been definitely working very hard to get this trail um, back into shape so visitors can use it. And, um, you know, I'm here just a little bit early. And again, I was expecting to have a pretty rough trail and um, it's not, they've done a wonderful job getting it, getting it ready pretty quickly. So I'm sure some people say, well, the fire was in 2020 and it's 2022, but um, a lot of times when a fire occurs, um, like once it's out, you, you can't go in that year um, to do the maintenance because you have flash floods when it rains or snow melt um, a lot of the trees are going to fall down so if you go in too early then you're just going to have to go in the next year and do a lot of work um, or rework so my guess is they likely started last year in 2021 um, of course 2020 was covid so it's 2021 so they may not have had a chance to start last year but um, if if they started last year then this year they just had to come in and you know, sweep through the stuff they did last year, make sure it's it's all good, and then just finish up the work for the rest of the trail <coughs> this year. But um, if they didn't get to come in last year, then 
man, they've done a lot of work this year, and it looks great. So big shout out to the trail maintenance folks. Um, thanks for watching the videos. I hope everyone's well. I'm going to get, I think, a few minutes of shade here from a cloud, so that's nice. And um, I'll talk to you folks tomorrow. Um, I'll be heading out of Rocky Mountain National Park tomorrow. I think I'll have two climbs tomorrow um, on my way to Steamboat. So we're getting pretty close to getting out of Colorado, which is hard to believe on the 8th of July, which, let's see, three days to three-ish days to Steamboat, and then I think a day-ish, maybe two after Steamboat to get out of Colorado. So the 13th of July, that's... That's like 10 or 11 days ahead of my original schedule. And 10 or 11 days, that also includes the fact that I had two injury zero days that I wasn't expecting in my original schedule. And, um, and an extra zero in grants because we had to figure out the trail, the road walk we were gonna do. Um, man, that's... That's nuts. Like through Colorado by mid-July. That means I, we could be through Wyoming because we'll do big miles in the Great Basin. We could be through Wyoming. By mid-August. Wow. Um, and I'm actually behind the pack. The pack I think is about five days ahead of me, I believe. Uh, five or six days, I think, is the main pack of hikers. And there are some people that are actually a week ahead of that. So they are already halfway through Wyoming, halfway through July, or coming up on halfway through July. This, man, it's been a weird year. I'm back here drowning in rain and they're, they're running across Wyoming. All right, so that was a tangent at the end. Uh, you're welcome. Um, Anywho, talk to you folks tomorrow. Have a nice evening.